I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times. DNFing is self-care. Hey y'all, my name is Nat. I hope you're having a terrific day today. And for this video, we are going to be doing a second chances reading vlog. Before we get into anything bookish, however, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below, as well as tell me in the comments what was the last book that you DNF'd. Are you gonna give it another chance? Was it temporary? Was it not? Let's talk about it. This is a video where I am going to be returning to some books I have previously DNF'd. I will say, all of these books I meant to come back to. Um, there's definitely some books out there that I have DNF'd that I have no plans of coming back to, but who knows, maybe I'll turn it into a video sometime, possibly torture myself a little, we'll see. The three books I'm planning to return to include Mayhem by Estelle Lore, which I read in October of 2021. I got to page 128 of this one. I picked this up in October because this was sold to me as The Craft Meets the Lost Boys, and that just sounded like such a fun time, as well as making it feminist. So obviously, of course, I was interested. Unfortunately for me, the first time around, this just was not hooking me in. I was um, pretty bored, I'm not gonna lie, but... I'm really hoping that coming back to it, maybe this time around it will be a little bit better. Since I do own this, I am very hopeful I end up enjoying it at least somewhat. So that way I didn't waste the eight bucks I bought this book with, but thankfully I bought it on sale. But let's be positive. Next is Girl A by Abigail Dean. This one I read in April of 2021, I believe. I had it on my Thrills and Chills readathon TBR, but unfortunately I just was not in the best mind space for this book at the time. This is based on many different true crime stories, but thankfully it is a fictional following a girl who escaped her awful, terrible home with her abusive parents and was able to have the rest of her siblings rescued. However, it is many years later now and her mother has recently passed away, leaving them the house and the siblings have to try and decide what to do with it. I got to page 40 of this one, so not too far in. I'm actually planning to pick this up as a part of Chloe's Crime Scene Corner, which is a book club. So hopefully with that, I can kind of bounce my thoughts off of some of the other people in the Discord and maybe that will help me to think more critically about this book. And then finally is another book that I actually DNF'd of April 2021, also because I just wasn't in the best mindset for this book at the time, which is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This story is following a young girl named Enchanted who is taken under the wing of a big name pop star called Corey Fields. However, in a future timeline, we see that Corey has ended up dead and Enchanted wakes up covered in his blood. So technically, I think this is more of a dark contemporary. When I was reading it first time around, I DNF'd it at about 166, so I I was a good amount in and I wouldn't really say this had a mystery or thriller feel because it alternates the timelines of the present day where Enchanted wakes up and Corey is dead and the past when she initially met Corey and was taken in by him to be trained and become a musician. Like I said, across the board, I plan to come back to all three of these books. So this worked out perfectly for a video idea. Obviously, they are all kind of on the darker side. Hopefully that won't be a problem. I've been reading a lot of rom-coms lately, so I think I'm in a pretty great mindset to be reading darker books. But just in case, I think have a few palette cleansers here and there, but the heads up, that might make updates a little sporadic for this video. <laughs> I guess I will talk to you guys when I have finally started into one of these books. Hey y'all, so I have officially started back into Girl A by Abigail Dean. I am actually at page 191 or chapter 5, so I've made a good bit of progress. I meant to update prior to this, but I forgot. Second time reading through, still definitely a very heavy book. Not really surprising given the premise of this is revolving around a family of children who were subjected to all kinds of abuse and neglect throughout their childhoods and now they're looking back on it. I do think I would be having a harder time with this book if I wasn't balancing it out by also reading a romance alongside it. I think having that little bit of palate cleanser every time I finish a section of this makes me feel a little bit better because this is really heavy and it does have influences from real life cases which is just a very dark thought process to have whenever you're reading a book like this. So I can't really blame myself in the past for putting this down because I I think it was the third book I was reading that was a mystery thriller. It's probably a good thing I did not finish this at that point. Picking this back up again and my actual feelings on it, I 
I don't know how to describe what I'm feeling while reading this. I don't want to say I'm enjoying this book because that just seems like the worst terminology you could use when reading about a family who is going through these absolutely terrible things. I'm so intrigued to see where this is gonna go. I don't know what this story is gonna end up having as a climax because all of the actual terrible bits have already happened and we're hearing about them in the future. I'm really interested to see what the story is going to develop into. I would say this is pretty character focused. We are following the main girl, girl A, who is known as Lex. I also don't particularly like her. I don't really think I can identify with her at all. I sympathize for her, but she's not my favorite person to be following in this book. That being said, all of the siblings we have met thus far, I don't think there's any of them that I would enjoy following anymore. I do think one thing I can compare this book to is I read somewhere that the TV adaptation of The Haunting of Hill House, all of the siblings in that are characterized around one of the five stages of grief. The siblings we've seen thus far in this, I kind of feel are characterized in a similar way, like they all have handled what happened to them in very different ways. And it's very interesting to look at that and just see how people can take these terrible things and build from them and the ways they do build and how they can differ and just it, it's interesting in terms of psychology. I'm doing the read-along for this with uh, Chloe's Crime Scene Corner which is a book club. I like having that because it gives me the opportunity to kind of talk out some of my thoughts with other people or read what other people are thinking about this book as well. Uh, across the board pretty much all of us agree that the chapters in this are really long and that kind of can give you a bit of a hindrance because it's so long especially for a book that's technically pitched as a thriller. You expect those kinds of stories to be very fast-paced and the plot to be moving quickly, but that's that's not what's happening here at all. It is really slow. It is very character focused. I have no idea what this book is gonna end up finishing out at. I have no idea what my rating is gonna be. Thus far, I just feel really confused while reading this and really conflicted. This update was a hot freaking mess. I'm sorry, I didn't actually take the time to like organize my thoughts in nice bullet points like I usually do. I just kind of sat down and filmed because I don't know how to feel about this book. It is not similar to any thriller I've ever read before. I don't even know if I would really describe this book as a thriller, honestly. It feels more like a literary fiction with like a mystery underlying it. Does that make sense? Hey y'all, so I have officially finished out Girl A and um, hmm, we're not off to a great start for this video. Uh, honestly, I probably could have just left this DNF and I, I wouldn't have missed out on too much. In the end, this had extraordinary character work. I think the character work was definitely the best part. I really appreciated seeing how each of the siblings dealt with the trauma that they lived through. That being said though, I don't think these characters were how do I put this? Relatable, which sounds terrible when you look at like a thriller. It was very hard for me to choose someone that I was rooting for even in our main character. I, I wouldn't particularly say I was rooting for her. I didn't really even like her. I just was kind of ambivalent and curious about her story. That, that was about it. Since this was a pretty character driven book, there wasn't really much of a plot, which usually I don't mind. But when you sell me a thriller, I kind of expect a little bit of a thriller plot to take place, some sort of a mystery, which I guess you could argue there kind of was, and there is a plot twist that took place. However, personally, I saw that coming from a mile away, so wasn't shocking. Wasn't really thrilled at any moment while reading this. I don't know what I would label this as, instead dark literary fiction, I guess, but not a thriller. I don't know, thrillers have a certain layout to them, this did not have that. I was never on the edge of my seat, I was never anxious, I was never uncomfortable. I mean, sure, the things that were talked about were really dark, were really terrible circumstances for these children to have been living through, but I guess, I don't know, my true crime side came out too much because I wasn't really that uncomfortable with it. That sounds terrible, I'm so sorry, but it's true. This also just had a very unsatisfying ending. Like, I, I don't even know really what to tell you about the ending because I don't know how I felt about it. I didn't like it. I didn't hate it. it. It didn't even really feel like it made sense for an ending. It was just, this happened. Bye. 
very, very unsatisfying. All in all though, the biggest issue I had with this book was the layout. There are seven chapters in this entire book, which I mean, this is not an insanely long book, but it is 342 pages and seven chapters. I mean, I don't need to do the math for you, but that's, that's quite long chapters. I don't know anybody who particularly enjoys a long chapter, but I, I don't either. It was not fun. That made it a slog to get through them. But on top of that, in every single chapter, we would alternate timelines between the current where we are following Lex and then the past where we are learning about the house of horrors that they grew up in. Thankfully, majority of the time I was reading this physically, but when I was listening to the audiobook, there is nothing to tell you that you have shifted timelines. There is no preamble, no little mark, nothing, no change in the voice. It was really confusing whenever I'd be listening to the audiobook. Thankfully, I did start to read it alongside and that helped me pick up on those moments. Not to mention that, but the alternating timelines would be for maybe half a page and then we'd change. It was so frustrating because it would feel like we wouldn't have enough time in either timeline to really get settled. And perhaps that was purposeful. Perhaps that was a part of this author trying to make this a thriller. I just, I didn't like that. Not to mention the fact this was really aggravating whenever we would get close to finding something out and then we'd change perspectives or timelines, excuse me. It was so frustrating because I just, I didn't care about what was happening in the other one. I wanted to get the answer we were leading in to. But no, no, I have to wait for this other section. Before we get back to that, technically speaking, I actually initially DNF'd this book because I just wasn't in a great headspace for it. But if it weren't for this video, I probably would have DNF'd this again. I'm really sad about this because this sounded like such an interesting story. It was just a big letdown. Two and a half stars. Honestly, I kind of wish I had just DNF'd it. Hopefully I will have better luck with the next book. Hey y'all, so I have officially continued Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson now. Sorry, this is a library copy, so this ring light situation, yeah, it's not gonna be great. I also decided to continue from where I had previously stopped back in April when I DNF'd this. Thankfully, I did feel like I remembered a good amount of the story, and since continuing, I don't think I'm really missing anything. This is a very memorable book, honestly. I, I'm really glad that I continued from where I had previously stopped because it's really hard to pick up at times, I'm not gonna lie. It's a very difficult read, particularly when you remember how young this main character is and how she is influenced by real life cases. It's it's such a difficult read, but it's so impactful. It was really easy to continue where I had previously left off because apparently my library's app saves where you've stopped in a book, even if you've returned it, no matter for how long, because clearly I had returned this months ago and yet it remembered exactly where I stopped and that was super useful. This is such an incredibly frustrating read at times. I want to protect Enchanted so badly. I also want her to stand up for herself and scream from the rooftops about everything she has lived through, but due to the entire situation surrounding her, it's it's just not that easy. It's not that simple. She feels so incredibly helpless and it is so understandable at the same time, given everything she's lived through and everything that's been drilled into her head. Oh, it's, it's really hard to pick this up. Uh, for example, I listened to this when I was driving to work today. I had a pretty mentally draining day and I just just could not bring myself to read the audiobook driving back. I just, I knew I was not in the space for it and I listened to some music instead because I just, I couldn't do it. But this book is incredibly written, I just have to say. Tiffany D. Jackson's writing is impeccable. This isn't really a YA thriller, it's more of a dark contemporary. The anxiety that the author manages to produce in me would make me think I'm reading a thriller. She reinforces the terror that Enchanted is experiencing and makes you feel it for her in the way she writes and the way she uses repetition and the sentence structure for those moments. It's so impressive. Like I said, I would think I'm reading a thriller, but I'm not. Particularly in the layout of this story, it does not read like a thriller, but the emotions that she is inducing in me would make me think it is. The characterization of Enchanted is also impeccable. It's fantastic. She's so hopeful for a life in the limelight and she really wants to make her passion for singing into this lifelong career. At times she seems so incredibly mature for her age. She has a very, she's very maternal instinct towards her little siblings but at the same time there will be different moments where her naivety and her innocence will really shine through and it reminds you that she is 17, barely 18 in this book and she is still so young and has experienced so many terrible things 
which I think really just makes the reading process of this even harder to stomach at times. With the section I am at, I know on one level I should feel somewhat at peace because of stuff that I probably shouldn't talk about in terms of spoilers. I'm not. I'm still so anxiety ridden whenever I'm reading this. I'm so scared of what's going to come around the corner. I think the dual timeline aspect of this also really helps to reinforce that because I know clearly the ending of what's going to happen, but I have no idea how we're going to reach that ending and I don't know how that ending is going to play out. I'm so nervous to get there. I'm I'm so scared of what's going to end up happening and I'm I have a feeling I'm probably going to cry at some point in this book. I've almost nearly cried two, three times now already. Like I said, very heavy, very impactful. I think to say I'm enjoying my reading experience would be incorrect, but I do think this is an amazing book and I am so impressed with Tiffany D. Jackson's writing in this. I really liked her work in Monday's Not Coming, but this one is just like, this is going to be burned into my brain. I don't think I could ever forget this story once I finish it. Okay guys, so that is it for now. Um, I will update you again maybe when I finish this, maybe when I've started Mayhem, I have no idea. We'll see what happens next. Hey y'all, so I officially finished out Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson and I must say I am not usually a person that reads author notes in books, but you should read this one because oh my god, it takes the entire book and just puts it in a different perspective or shifts your perspective of the reading experience and I loved that so much. It also shifts the what you should be taking away from this book at the same time. For the people that say this is definitely too heavy for a YA book, I hear what you're saying saying but I think it's people who are in the YA audience that are the ones who need to be aware of these kinds of situations and know about the red flags to look out for. There are so many different kinds of abuse covered in this book and some of them don't even seem very serious in the moment but the repercussions of them can be equally as dangerous as we clearly see through Enchanted's eyes in the story. I realized that the writing style of this almost feels like a memoir and that just makes it so much more difficult to read at times. It is very serious. It is very heavy. The side character reactions to the news when it's broke are so unfortunately realistic. The way the mixed media and the alternating timelines are used in the story are so clever and they weave together a very fast-paced book. As I said previously, this really isn't a thriller. It's more of a dark contemporary, but it definitely got my heart racing like a thriller does and the way I was so wrapped up in the story was very similar to thriller thriller books. The character work continued to be magnificent. I cared about Enchanted so much by the end of this. I was so wrapped up in her life that honestly, I didn't even really care about the mystery that was underlying everything. I just wanted her to be safe and be okay and finally start to recover from this terrible ordeal she's lived through and for the other women like her to finally get some justice. I will say towards the end, I was getting a little concerned that this was going to take a similar route that Jackson did with Monday's Not Coming and I wasn't a particularly big fan of how it was handled in that book, so I was getting a little nervous for the end. Took a safe turn, did not do that. In fact, I think the turn was all the more shocking because of how she handled it in here. All in all, just like my biggest thought process is this was such a hard read. I don't know if I could ever really go back to reread this, but I was so enamored with the story the entire way through and I don't regret reading it at all. I gave this four stars. My very few negatives are mostly just down to a few things that I felt lacked logic throughout the story in terms of not just Enchanted's actions but other side characters actions as well and then the fact that I feel almost every character apart from Enchanted didn't really have much depth and I know she can give more depth to side characters like I saw in Monday's Not Coming but I just didn't really feel that here. All in all though, wow, I'm really glad I came back to this when I was in a better mindset though because whew, I just feel like if I finished this when I initially started it last April, I would have gone in like a downward spiral and probably might have ended up in a reading slump. Don't want that. Really glad I didn't do that. This is why DNFing is important and you can always come back to books you DNF. Even though the first one didn't go well, this one I really enjoyed. Well, enjoyed is probably the wrong word, but a very impactful book nonetheless. Honestly, I have not started back into Mayhem. Um, I did check out the audiobook from my library, however, so hopefully I will eventually get around to that. Maybe? I don't know. Hey y'all! So I have continued into Mayhem by Estelle Lore, and so I think I said I was like, what, 
120 pages in when I initially DNF'd this. Since it really hasn't been that long, arguably, since I last picked this up, I decided to just continue from that point because I remember we like nothing really had happened in terms of plot by that point. We had mostly met the characters, we had understood a little bit of their background. Mayhem comes from a family of weirdos, <laughs> that sounds awful to say, but they're weird people who live in this small beachside town. Her biological father died when she was pretty young, her mother has run away from this place and gone on many avengers unfortunately for mayhem and recently they have run away from her abusive stepfather and have returned to the home that her mother once left now she's met her aunt she's meeting her adoptive cousins and kind of finally starting to find a kinship and some sort of a family for herself she really likes the stability and she feels more comfortable here while her mother is definitely still dealing with her own drama mayhem's like kind of bonding with her step cousins and going out and doing weird things. <laughs> My biggest issue now with me being at like 200 pages in is it still feels like hardly anything has happened. There's really not a lot of plot in this, which in that case, okay, you need to give me really fantastic atmosphere or really amazing characters, but I'm not really getting either of those things either. The writing in this is not anything special. The atmosphere is not particularly strong. I don't feel taken in by a beach town near a carnival with kind of creepy vibes because there's somebody killing people on the beach. Yeah, none of that. It is not infectious. It is not drawing me in. It's not particularly great. In terms of characters, everyone, everybody is super 2D. Her mom, dealing with her crap, pretty absent, that's about it. Mayhem, uncomfortable in being a teenager, trying to find a home for herself, desperate for anyone to like her. Her aunt, the cool aunt. Her cousins, there's obviously the cool cousin who is low-key kind of a bitch. There's the cousin who's the little kid and basically follows them around all the time aptly named Kid. And then there's the older brother of Kid, Jason, who, anybody want to guess what this is? Because this is my other big problem. Jason's the hot guy, her adoptive cousin. And yes, I get it. Technically, no crossing of lines there. She's only just met the dude. Honestly, they, they have no actual blood relation. Still weird still a little uncomfortable that you meet somebody and you're like oh you're my you're my cousin and then your next thought is oh this guy is hot really uncomfortable but even from mayhem's perspective she never really showcases that she's attracted to jason all that much it's very just like small things here and there that kind of tips you off that ah she might have a crush and then out of nowhere the cool cousin acknowledges it and is like oh well he likes you too go do something about it and then they're making out in a cornfield not a cornfield, they're, they were in like, no, they were in like an orchard thing, but uh, still like, seriously? Why are you giving me a relationship? There's been no development of any sort of a basis for this to go anywhere. I just, it's so unconvincing. I don't like any of the characters. Oh, and my other biggest problem, craft, which is witches, meets lost boys, which is vampires. So you expect that one of those is gonna appear at some point. And yes, we do learn that there's some sort of supernatural thing in this town. There's something supernatural about this family. I have no idea what they are. Mayhem has even found out this whole secret. She is learning about it. She has been, she's starting to be trained in whatever sort of thing this is. We're not told anything specifically within the text to explain what they are or what they can do and it's driving me insane you don't need to be coy about it you don't need to make it seem secretive from the reader just tell me flat out are they vampires are they witches their power comes from water so are they freaking mermaids like just tell me i don't i don't need you to just like kind of have this roundabout talking of it drop in oh they can do this they can do that cool but what the hell are they it's so frustrating and because of that I've officially decided I'm just DNFing this one again. You know I tried twice. I'm really sorry Estelle Lore but 
girl, you did not do well here. Not great. Did not enjoy this. Um, should have trusted past Nat's original decision to DNF this one. I wanted to go back because I bought this book. I spent money on it, but I feel like I'm just wasting my time at this point. There, there's nothing holding me here. It, it's not, it's, it's such a shame because honestly, I really liked this cover when I initially saw it. I like the title. I, I even like the original idea behind the book, but you've given me nothing. That's really unfortunate. On that note, that is me finishing out all three books that I have previously DNF, gave them second chances. Two out of three I honestly could have done without, which is a shame. <laughs> okay guys, so that is it for today. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I have all my socials linked in the description if you're interested in keeping up with what I am reading. I come out with videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you, bye!